story seven. I was born in the county of Fife on the east coast of Scotland in 1953. Although I was born in Scotland, uh, my parents come from Ireland, from the county of Donegal, which is further north in the north of Ireland. It's a fairly remote area and I visit it many times. My father and mother came over in the 1920s when work was very hard to find in Donegal, being a rural community. They worked on the land when they arrived in Scotland. My father then moved on to the building trades, where he worked all his life, really. My parents uh, were brought up in Ireland. When they were born, they were British citizens, because Britain still ruled Ireland at that time, up until 1922, when then it became a free state of Ireland. They lived the rest of their life in Scotland and became used to the towns and the conveniences of Scotland. They returned to Ireland on a regular basis to the rural side, but I don't think they would have wished to go back to actually work there on the land, as it's very hard to get a living there. My father died last year, unfortunately, at the age of 83, but um, my mother still lives in Scotland and enjoys Scotland and has many interests. She is very heavily involved in the church um, and the Irish community that is local in Fife. Fife is basically a mining community when I was younger. Uh, it is across the fort from Edinburgh, which is the capital city of Scotland. I live predominantly in mining communities when I was younger and attended the local Catholic school, which was St Bride's, until 11 years old when I took an exam which then determined which school you went to. I went on to St Columbus Secondary School until the age of 15. At 15, I then moved on to a technical college to learn technical subjects, electric, mechanics, woodwork, etc., for one year period. At 16, I started work as an apprentice electrician, attending college one day per week and sitting the final exams at 20 year old. At this time, I passed the sitting guilds with a merit which was quite good. Um, this finished my technical training and I became an approved electrician. I then went on to work for a large company called James Scott & Company, which was based in Dunfermline. We had done mainly industrial work. We worked for factories, whisky distilleries, which are abundant in Scotland at the time. Uh, we'd done high voltage, low voltage, medium voltage. We are a very big company. I continued working for this company for three years after I passed my exams as an estimator, electrician, that was office work and on site, mainly industrial units and whisky distilleries until I was 23. At this time I started my own business as a self-employed electrician, working for myself and doing domestic work throughout Fife and Scotland. I also at this time played with folk groups. Myself and a mandolin player worked the length and breadth of Scotland mainly three, four nights a week and this helped to subsidise the wages as an electrician. After six months uh, working self-employed, I actually had a car accident um, and I could no longer work self-employed. And at the same time, I received a letter from Tenerife, one of the Spanish colonies, asking me to go there and play the guitar. I went to Tenerife, stayed there for one year and played the guitar in local bars, Irish bars, for the same owner, always. There were many tourists in Tenerife, Swedish, Spanish, British, mainly British, German. Um, the work was hard, it was not long, it was four hours, but quite arduous for being four hours a night. You had to work ten o'clock to two o'clock in the morning. I left Tenerife after a year and returned to Scotland where I got married. Um, after one year we had a child called Victoria who unfortunately was born with a damage, which was cerebral palsy, which is damage to the central nervous system, and brain damage, which causes damage to the central nervous system. Victoria is at the Petal Institute, but I also have another two daughters, Rebecca and Hannah, who live in Scotland with my wife. They, the reason they live in Scotland, I live here, is my wife is diabetic, so to travel to Hungary and stay with Victoria would be impossible without another carer to come in case anything happened to my wife at the time. Therefore, it's always been myself that has come to Hungary the last six years uh, to look after Victoria at the Peto while she is studying. My other two daughters attend school, a local primary school in Burnt Island. One is at the kindergarten stage and our child, Rebecca, is 10. She enjoys very much her school. 
She enjoys poetry. She is quite good at poetry and has entered two or three competitions. She also has dancing, uh, French lessons, a very varied and social life. We thought about bringing them to Hungary, but the trouble is that as their community in Scotland, they enjoy their community and it would be very hard for them to live here and also financially it would be impossible. Uh, the house in Scotland I must support, which is very expensive, and also support Victoria here, which I have some help from the government, without which I could not survive in Hungary. In 1990, we watched a television programme called Standing Up For Joy, which was shown throughout Britain. This encouraged many families to come to Budapest, mainly to seek out a therapy called Conductive Education, introduced by Andres Peto in the 1950s. Uh, I came here in 1990, and at that time Budapest was a very different country. It was quite a cultural shock. It was very much different from Britain and from Western countries. Things were hard to get. I found it very strange, the language, to settle here. Uh, very strange. That was six years ago. I've been here six years, and I find that it's changed drastically. It is better. I can understand some Hungarians speak some Hungarian, and in general, I quite like Budapest now. I've developed many hobbies here. Play, I play guitar for fun, and I write poetry. I write, I know I'm writing a novel at present, none of which have been published uh, computers I work on. And I enjoy creating things in general. I write a great deal of poetry and songwrite. I always songwrite and play music, and play a lot of Irish music here.